Well, good morning. About 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, just relaxing and just having a coffee in the house. And uh, I decided that I would come out and continue my new series of just talking to you guys about the music scenes, various scenes. Today, we're going to talk about the Toronto music scene. <laughs> what a scene it is, that is for sure. So, I've been playing in the Toronto music scene since 1985, probably was around then, was my first gigs in Toronto. And um, it was a totally different scene in the 80s compared to the scene now in 2024, totally different. It was a thriving scene in the 80s and um, a very worthwhile scene. Everything was exciting. It was happening. Now, keep in mind, I was new to the scene, so that definitely does factor in. Whenever you're new to something, it's more exciting than when you've been doing it for 35 years. <laughs> so you have to take that into account, that things were exciting because it was new. And I was a kid from a, a neighboring town, not, not a big city kid by any means. And uh, being in Toronto was just like, whoa, I, I can't believe I'm here. Look at these buildings. And I can't believe people are actually going to want to hear me play my drums. And, you know, so it was a big deal. But here I am about 20 years old. And I started playing my first gigs in Toronto with a, a local band that I was in. And we were playing a lot of dive bars. But back in those days, like I just said, I didn't really care. Because the dive bars were all the gigs that we could get at that time because we were a new band, new to the scene. We were lucky to be getting a gig at all. And believe it or not, <clears throat> the money at the time was better than getting a, a, a job uh, doing just about anything for a 20-year-old kid with not a lot of experience. So working, playing, doing what I love, and making money doing it, you can't beat it. So at that time, there was a high excitement level. And I played at lots of different places. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't remember. <laughs> I played hundreds and hundreds of gigs in Toronto in the last 35 years. So I can't remember all the places. Some of the standout places, um, I do remember playing um, Larry's Hideaway. I think, I think that's in Toronto. And I can remember playing Lee's Palace on Queen Street, um, the Horseshoe Tavern, um, this, a place on Lansdowne. I can't remember the name of the venue, but I remember the street it's on. <laughs> uh, anyways, I played so many different places in Toronto and some good, some bad. I have some really funny stories, some some scary stories too so that's what i'm going to talk about in this video is the good the bad and the ugly of the toronto scene now as i was saying in the early days it was new it was exciting it was fun and um, i enjoyed it the traffic wasn't as bad compared to now if we fast forward to today i hate playing in toronto <laughs> The crowds are not what they used to be. Money, garbage, because you're get, I got paid the same back in the 80s as what I'm making now. It's hardly changed at all. Venue owners do not give a rat's ass about the musicians, and they don't care. You can whine and cry all you want about not getting paid enough. They'll just tell you, you don't want to play? That's fine. We'll get a band that does. And that's how they roll. There's no respect for the musicians. There's no respect for how much hard work you've put into leading up to getting these gigs. All they care about is they want to get a band in there, entertain the people, and they want to make money. Now, I understand that. You want to make money as a business. I totally understand that. But it used to be that if you were cheap and you didn't pay the band, well, you got a subgrade band. The higher end bands got paid a lot more money. All that has changed. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a high end band or you're a low end band, 
you're all pretty much making the same money. Maybe the high-end band makes a little bit more money, but if it's not ticketed, ticketed is a different thing. And I'll do a separate video on all the gigs I've done. We're not all the gigs because <laughs> we're talking a lot, but some of the gigs I've done in ticketed venues. What I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Toronto scene is I'm talking about bars, street gigs, getting hired, maybe even privately for that matter, but all in, in the Toronto scene. Um, they did a lot of weddings in Toronto. They paid well, but I set the price for that. That was a totally different thing. You're not dealing with bar owners. I just want to focus on the main bar scene in, in Toronto in this video. So um, let me tell you a, a story, a horror story from the Toronto scene. Again, I, I played so many venues there. I can't remember what gig what the venue was, but I don't really want to get into too many names of venues and names of people and stuff in these videos anyways, but I was playing a gig less in Toronto somewhere. I don't remember where. And um, end of the gig, of course, the gig's over. You're tearing down your gear. I'm taking all my gear out. I'm loading it in my vehicle. As I'm loading it in, a woman approaches. She's got a child. Now, keep in mind, this is 2.30 in the morning because um, it's evolved over time. But back in at this time, the gigs usually started around 9 p.m. and ended at 2 a.m. So this is probably 2.30, quarter to 3 in that range, maybe even later, maybe even 3 a.m. And a woman shows up outside of my vehicle where I'm loading up in an alleyway. And um, she's got a kid with her, like a baby, probably about a year old. And she says to me, oh, I don't have any way to get home. My baby and I are stuck. We don't have any money. Uh, can you either give us a ride or some money or something like this, right? She's begging me to, um, oh, I remember. She's begging me to give her a ride home. That was it. And anyways, I'm loading up my gear. and I, I don't really know how to respond to her. I'm, I'm kind of, you know, taken aback and thrown off and everything. And um, I go, I, I just say, uh, I don't know, um, you know, let me see, whatever. I, I can't remember. I just thought it was really odd. I can't remember exactly what I said to her. But I went in and the guy comes up to me. I think it was a doorman. And he says, is that lady asking you for a ride? I said, yeah, she is. He says, do not accept a ride from her because she'll take you to an area where her boyfriend and two or three of his buddies are waiting there. They know you just got paid. You're a musician. They know you just got paid cash. It's a scam. They're going to beat you up, threaten you, steal your money, steal your vehicle, steal all your gear. You're going to lose everything. She uses the baby as a you know, I'm safe. I'm a woman. I'm safe. I have a baby. And she uses the baby for sympathy because what the hell is she doing out at 3 a.m. with the baby? So I, I was a little bit thrown off by this whole thing of the whole situation. I didn't know exactly what to do. She's literally waiting outside. So I tell my bandmates, do not I tell them what this guy just told me. Don't, this girl over here is pulling a scam, blah, blah, blah. So I go outside and I just tell her, look, uh, you know, I don't want to get into any arguments with her or whatever or create a scene. So I just tell her, I don't, I'm not from Toronto. I'm leaving town. <clears throat> I'm out of here. I don't have any room for you in my car. I don't have a baby seat. It's full of drums, which was true, actually. Actually, that was absolutely true. I remember telling her that I did not have any room for her or the baby. Plus, the baby wouldn't be in a car seat, like I said. So, very strange situation. She got quite angry with me. And she's like, I've got a baby. And she tries to, you know. And I'm like, look, that's <laughs> it's not my problem, you know. Go find somebody else. So, she ended up asking another one of my bandmates. But luckily, because I... Um, you know, informed them, they pretty much said, I'm not giving you a ride either. Same reasons as me, though. Full PA system, no car seat, blah, blah, blah. And uh, 
I call ended up calling the police because I was concerned about this baby. Now, I don't know what happened after that because I just called the police just to let them know this was going on. I don't even know if they came out. I never saw them and, and I just left. But that was the ugly side of what I had to deal with. And it to this day, that kind of bugged me that this woman is using this baby to pull scams on working musicians. And um, the Toronto scene, drugs, hookers, low life, scumbags, drunks, you name it. I dealt with everything playing gigs there. Now, not every night was, oh, no, I dread going out. Some nights I just packed up, threw the stuff in my car, and I left. But other times I would have unloading nightmare because the venue didn't have a proper musician unloading area. Sometimes you would have to unload or load in, rather, through the front door. So load in would be through the front door. And you're on a busy, busy street, and there's always people honking and getting angry because you had to park your vehicle outside for 15 minutes, whatever, in busy traffic to load in. Now, it wasn't as bad loading out because it was 3 a.m. and there's not as much traffic, but it is a big city. There's still traffic. So the load in, load out was always a freaking nightmare. Some places would have a back alleyway you would drive in and you would have a back entrance and then you'd have to load in through the kitchen <laughs> i can remember loading in through a kitchen loading into an elevator having to go up to the top floor of this restaurant because the restaurant had three different floors and then we'd have to make our way with all these drums and pa and everything through the crowd because the place was full of people already eating dinner we were the entertainment after dinner but we had to set up during dinner so that was a freaking nightmare, having to maneuver our way through the crowds. The other thing that, um, fast forwarding now, I left the Toronto scene. It wasn't because of those particular situations, but I will tell you, um, I'm not going to get into the story too heavily, but I got drugged at a venue. I'll give you a brief story there. Um, playing a gig in Toronto. I set up, uh, had a beer. I don't drink anymore, but at this time I had a beer. I stupidly put my beer down on the stage. I went to the bathroom. I came back, continue setting up, drinking my beer. All of a sudden I, I'm not a drug user. I don't get drunk. I quit drinking about two years ago and I've never ever used drugs except for prescription when I had a, a you know surgery or something from a doctor, never had an addiction, nothing. Anyway, somebody drugged me, put something in my beer, and most of the gigs that I do are with professional bands, and I'm playing with a click track. So can you imagine? All of a sudden, I start feeling very strange. I'm getting high, whatever. I didn't even know what the hell was going on. But I can just remember seeing all these colors, hearing brr, 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 sounds and all this stuff. I don't know what they put in my drink, but I started to feel really weird. Imagine trying to hear a click that's going brr, 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 instead of dip, 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 you know, a normal beep, beeping click sound. So I tell the guys in the band that, you know, I'm not feeling well. Somebody's drugged me. I'm, 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 I'm kind of screwed up. Anyways, I ended up playing the gig. I don't really remember the gig. I'm going to be totally honest. I don't remember the gig, but I remember it was not fun for me. It was not pleasant. I don't enjoy being high. I'm not interested in any form of drug use. And I was extremely pissed off that somebody drugged me. And I knew I was drugged, but of course, it was too late. Once it's in your system, that's it. So I did the gig. As I recall, there was no complaints. Even the bands, you know, said you, you know, everything was fine. But I can remember struggling with the click and struggling with the form of the tunes and what I'm supposed to do because I normally play straight. I think I've been drunk at one, maybe two gigs in my entire life, and I played thousands of gigs. So for me to be high in this situation, 
I was really pissed off. And that was the end of me, it for me shortly after that in the Toronto scene. I just got so ticked off about that situation. Also in Toronto, now there's nowhere for bands to park. They don't give a shit about your vehicle. And um, you are ending up having to park somewhere, paying 50 to 60, sometimes more dollars in parking. And the gig pays 125, 150. You're paying sixty dollars in parking. You, I drove an hour, over an hour, to get to the gig from where I live. It's just a total pain in the ass. It's not worth it. Plus, Toronto. They did a study recently. Who has the worst traffic in the world? And they picked all you know, Los Angeles, Beijing, New York, London, Paris, all the major cities in the world. Toronto included. Montreal, um, Vancouver, etc. Guess who has the absolute worst traffic in the world? Toronto. So they took an area of each one of these cities to how long it would take you to drive one kilometer at a bus at busy time, you know, four or five in the afternoon. Toronto, from one end, one kilometer on Yonge Street took 35 or 36 minutes to drive, something like that. It took the longest amount of time of any city in the world. So Toronto verdict voted worst traffic. Now I can attest to this because driving into the city with the amount of construction that goes on in Toronto, they're always shutting down the major link highways and there's not a lot of ways to get into Toronto. You have to take the, um, you know, if you're coming from the east end, you're taking the Don Valley Parkway. If you're coming from the west end, then you're uh, taking the QEW and it's a nightmare driving in Toronto. It's an absolute nightmare and I can't stand it. It stresses me out and I get anxiety and I just can't take it. So driving into Toronto for a gig is a dreaded thing. I absolutely dread it. And as a result, I don't want to do it anymore. So I quit all gigs in Toronto. I don't take any more. I, got, I, I still get offers to go play in Toronto. I always ask them. Anytime somebody says, yeah, Tim, you want to come and play? We got a gig for you, whatever. Where is it? Oh, it's on uh, the Danforth. Uh, not interested. <laughs> I mean, there are a few venues that I can access in Toronto that aren't too bad to get to. But I just decided to wipe it all clean. And I'm I'm not doing any more gigs in Toronto because the scene is just not what it used to be. The excitement level for me is not there anymore. The crowds, nobody gives a shit about the band unless you're a name band. If I'm playing with a name band, that's a different thing because people are there, they're paying money. That's a whole different video. I'll talk about that in a different video about the crowds at a paying venue versus crowds in a restaurant or a regular bar. Nobody gives a shit about you in a regular bar. I've played so many gigs where people didn't even pay. It was as if you weren't even there. You're on stage playing your heart out. The band is great. The band is happening. You're having a good night of playing. You look out to the audience. You're not even there as far as they're concerned. And I just got sick of that. So I do not do the whole band situation playing in Toronto unless it's higher end gigs, theater gigs, or ticketed with a known act. So that's my take on the Toronto scene. Doom and gloom. <laughs> my last few videos are all doom and gloom, but it seems that all my videos are always upbeat, and I feel now that I need to inform you people out there about the real scenes behind music. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to continue doing this. It's bitching and complaining. It's whining, but you guys seem to like it. <laughs> so, whatever. I'm just going to keep doing these. And uh, I like to share my, you know, experiences and whatnot. I got tons of road stories. And I'm just going to keep uh, telling you guys as we move through. All right. So, I would like you to like this video. Oops. Please subscribe to my channel and please share. One thing YouTubers never talk about is sharing the videos. Please share 
uh, any one of my videos, not just this one, but any of them with family and friends and whatnot. And, and I'm trying to grow this channel and um, I need your help. Thanks a lot for watching. And as always, keep drumming. See ya.